Hey, what's up guys? This is Gary coming back to you from Old Barn Homestead Sunday morning here and uh, just Thought I'd give you an update on this channel. I hadn't made a video in a few days um, The last video I made uh, you guys <clears throat> Had uh, Given me a lot of uh, suggestions on CNC shops that could help me with that project and then also I had several people reach out to me uh, some guys that I you know like Mark uh, Oh gosh, PMP, what is it, PMP Performance? Man, I'm terrible with names. Um, he bought, I think he bought a flag for me uh, like a year ago. Anyway, um, so here's um, what I decided to do on this. And let me see if I've got the, the part. Oh, I don't know what I did with it now. Sorry about that, just needed to get myself organized a little better. And uh, see if we can get this thing to focus. Let me put it down on this table. It'll probably focus better. So this is um, here's what they've they've decided to do. You know, if you guys remember the drawing, you may not remember it, but it uh, you know it had an offset hole in it, it that came in. You know, <clears throat> let me zoom back out. It, it came in like on an angle. <clears throat> it was undecided on what that angle needed to be, but the fact that they needed it on an angle is what really caused the need to create that um, that three-piece design where you have this, and then you have the tube nut, and then the end canal piece that goes in the center. So what they've, uh, in talking to them more, they've now said for some reason, I don't know why, that they don't need or don't want <clears throat> want that ability for the offset hole and they kind of acted like something about the design that I came up with didn't allow for it which I, I didn't get that part but whatever there the communication is a little bit yeah a little bit tricky they're nice people I'm not trying to say that it's a difficult situation or they're being difficult or anything they're really good people but like what they want and how they want it you know has been a little um uh, I don't know little tricky anyway so they want to make it a one-piece design with the hole in the center so what i did on this one is i welded it up with stainless and um it's really not wanting to focus is it let me zoom this back out all the way okay there you go um so i welded the end of this up and then faced it off on the lathe i just chucked it on the threads it being stainless, I figured that it wouldn't hurt them or anything, but I could be wrong about that. I'd need to double check that. But I'm, so I faced it, you know, once I welded it up, I faced it off on the lathe and then drilled a 80 thousandths hole in it. And the drill wouldn't, I mean, I used a center drill too. I don't really have a super tiny center drill. I need to get a smaller one. But I used a center drill on it and it still walked off to the side because the uh my lathe is a mess so and here's the drill i used um and you know my like well you see that was i've already pulled that all the way back so the the morse taper is already disengaged but um even when it's engaged in the uh in the taper it's just the whole thing has got some movement to it especially when you extend it out let me let me run it out here a little bit and I've seen other ones do this same thing, you know, where they're just a little bit loose in there. And, you know, and so if you don't have a really defined center, it seems like it wants to, it can easily kind of wander off to the side. And it definitely did that. I was able to get the hole in it, but it just, it just wasn't acting right. So I think what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to weld all these up with stainless and come back and um, just put chuck that up in a drill and hit this on the belt grinder to to put a flat and to smooth it down, you know, the where I welded it up. And then weld the flat up with end canal filler rod, which is really what they want. And, um, and then again, put it back on the belt grinder and grind a small flat on the end of it. And then put some soft jaws in the middle over here and put my hole in it on the mill. So put some soft jaws so I can repeat the position and just kind of set up a, 
a workstation. And so I've told them that, you know, that I can go ahead and make these, you know, of course I'll be charging them for the, for the time I'm spending on it. And there's not really any, well, the materials I've got to buy some in-canal filler wire, which I'm guessing probably isn't cheap for what filler wire normally costs, but I don't really need that much of it. So it shouldn't be a lot. But anyway, so um, I think I've gotten back to everybody that reached out to me on that. And I really appreciate that. I didn't realize, I mean, I've now gotten a lot of new connections that can help me possibly with some projects on production runs that I wasn't uh, aware of before. So um, there's a guy in Houston. Gosh, I can't remember his name. I'm, I'm really apologize, guys. I don't mean to be impersonal about these things because I know you are a real person and you have a name and and all that. But if I don't know you, like I haven't re regularly seen you in the comments or whatever, then, you know, it's you're, you're kind of a new acquaintance to me, even though I may not be a new acquaintance to you because you watch my videos and see me a lot and know my name and all that. So you know what I mean? Anyway, I, I painted this stuff yesterday. I was going to give you guys a heads up. I get a lot of people that ask me, um, you know, across all of my videos, I get constantly asked about, uh, you know, what kind of paint gun do you use? What, what kind of, uh, you know, paint is that? What, you know, how did you get those uh, lines in it? How did you, I mean, like, I get messages that flow in on Facebook. They come in on, you know, YouTube with people constantly asking about all these things. And so what I did is to try to, A, help people. Because if you're asking me questions like, what kind of paint gun did you use? You buying the paint gun that I that I use is not going to let you get a paint job like this. There's so much more to it. And if you ask that question, it's an indication that you have a long way ahead of you toward getting a paint job like this. So, but the people that are asking think, "Oh, well you can just get that paint gun and, you know, get a nice paint job." And it just it's doesn't work that way. It's just like if you get one of those Monarch 10 EE lays, then you can turn some really nice stuff on it. No, I mean I'm not a machinist. I do okay with it, but you know, Adam Booth could come down here and, you know, not have any of these problems I'm having, you know, because he's a real machinist and he's an expert at it. And so, um, anyway, what I've done is I, I use these two, this job I'm working on here to film an entire step-by-step -step detailed set of videos. And I've, I've got probably somewhere around eight videos that I've created. That's everything from, uh, from the prep to, you know, how to do the artistic, you know, grinding and all on it to uh, paint, where to buy it, how to mix it, what kind of paint guns, the ones I use, maybe a couple of lower cost options, um, how to do opaque base versus candy base. You can see this is translucent candy base. It's got a different look to it. This is opaque base here how to mix this, the clear, how to get the clear to flow out and just get this super, just glass looking look to it. So I filmed, I've got almost all of it filmed and it, it's, I've been working on that for probably the last mm, two, three days. A lot of videoing, a lot of editing. I've got a little bit of the editing done. I still have a lot more to do on that. But anyway, I'm gonna be offering that as a product and, and my partnership with, with TrueCut uh, I'm going to offer it to them as a free gift to any new, uh, any person that buys a true cut table. So anybody that gets a true, that buys a new true cut table will get the video series. And then anybody else that just wants to, you know, that's getting this, you know, cause a lot of people are like, I want to buy that CNC table so I can make metal art. Well, you know, once you get the table and you learn how to use it and you can cut the metal art, then you got to figure out how to get a really good finish on it. And powder coating is one way to go, and I think it's a pretty straightforward and a fairly easy. I mean, there's some stuff to that as well, but not near the level of complexity of getting, you know, using automotive paints with all the different steps and the different, you know, mixing and, and um, you know, and the spraying techniques and all that. With powder coat, you just kind of fog it on there. You get an even, you know, it's a lot more forgiving than than the than the paint. I've, I've had powder coating setups a couple of times, and so I'm pretty familiar with that, so... Anyway, if anybody's watching this that is interested in something like that, um, you know, let me know. Um, I'm, I'll, I'll have the video series up and available. I'm thinking about like $19 or $29, somewhere, you know, kind of in that range. 
Um, and my hope is to continue to add to it. I do have a flag that I've got to paint today. And so I'm going to get these out of here. I painted these last, or got the clear on them last night. And I'll get the flag set up. And I'm going to do a complete walkthrough on the flag from, from beginning to end. Because I think a lot of people that buy the table <clears throat> tables, you know, one of the things, it, that was the case with me. The very first thing I cut on this on my table was one of the American flags. So the files for it are all over the internet. You know, it's no secret about getting the download file, but getting the killer paint job on it is not all, all over the internet. You can see pictures of it, but I've not seen details on, on how to do it. And it's taken me a while to get them to look really, really nice. Um, and you just see the clear and the candy, you know, how uh, clear everything is. I mean, there's still... You see little specks and things in the the top of the clear if you look at it from certain angles. And that's just, you can't get away from that, you know, and, and especially painting in a shop. Now, when I get in my paint booth, I'm hoping to get, you know, get eliminate some of that. But you're still always going to get that. You know, even in a perfectly nice downdraft paint booth, they all come out with, uh, with a little bit of nibs and stuff. And that's why you have wet sanding and buffing, you know, to get that stuff out. And metal art's just... These things are too flimsy. They're too, I mean, you could wet sand and buff it, but it'd be a lot of work and you really risk. Uh, one of the things that, I don't know if this will show up or not, but if you look at this closely, you can see an edge right where, you can see a, a raised area right around the edge of it. And that's just what the heat does to it. Everywhere there's an opening, it, it's got a raised edge. And you start running a buffer over that, it's gonna catch that edge and burn right through the paint. So you're kind of limited on that, you know, what you can clean out. And that's why it comes down to, and I cover this in the video, it's extremely important to just think about all the variables that you have, like, um, you know, wearing lotion on your face, making sure that you blow your shirt off and your body off with air before you lean over anything to paint, you know, you want to be away from it. And if you have an environment where you have a lot of dirt and dust and debris, don't get a lot of air movement. You know, I, I just put that little fan in the door and I get a little gentle movement to get the overspray out, but not so much movement that it's picking up stuff and dragging it across the paint. You know, those are the things that I, you know, details and tips that I cover in the video. They're quite lengthy. You guys know how long some of my videos are when I get to talking and it's can be quite miserable. But if you're trying to learn something, you know, you do want to, you know, if you're, it's like taking a class on it. You don't want somebody doing a highly edited, you know, quickly, you know, getting through things. You want things explained and walk through, you know, in a great level of detail because some of the details and the tips are really what, you know, really what make the difference. So anyway, guys, that's about it. Um, that's what, I, what I've kind of been working on. I've got to get, they've given me the approval. I got to get the, the in canal filler wire and I got to get set up to get these things made and then that'll be finished up with that with the project that this goes on you guys have seen a little about that here and there so um also somebody you know pointed out about uh i think it was brian block uh pointed out about the available you know like nozzles that are made specifically for this that atomize correctly where they atomize away from the actual part meaning you know the way their their systems work is the flame ignites right on the where it comes out of the, the nozzle. And that's why it has to be in canal because it burns so hot at the at the tip, it, it opens up the nozzle after a little bit of use. So they use in canal, uh, welded over the top of it, and then the hole drilled through it so you have an in canal uh, top finish on it that won't burn away so easily. And somebody was pointing out that the design, you know, that's that's not how that should be designed. and. I didn't know that, and I definitely agree with you on that. And it's something I want to bring up to them. That, and again, this is an R and D thing. You know, they're they're just they're just looking at options. And this thing that I built for them is kind of a prototype. You know, we can certainly change it. We could get different nozzles. You know, that can screw in. Uh, assuming we can find some that have an eighth inch NPT on this end. But if we need to make an adapter, or you know, if I needed to weld up, if I needed to make some flat bar, and uh, I'm gonna just kind of take you up high, forgive the mess. If I needed to make a flat bar and, you know, well, uh, cover this whole set of holes up with a little strip of flat bar, weld that all in and then make new holes, you know, I can make the new holes in the flat bar first and then weld, weld it across it to accommodate the new fittings. You know, that wouldn't be terribly difficult to do. So 
anyway, guys, just a video saying, you know, I got so many comments and uh, so many of you guys reaching out to me about, about that. And like a day or two after I made the video, uh, I was going back and forth with the customer and that's when they come came back and said well We don't really want the whole offset anymore uh, We want it right down the center. So could you just can you just weld those those fittings up? And that'll save us from having those made out of in canal, which likely would be very expensive You know the materials expensive and the machining is expensive as well just because of the hardness of the of the material but anyway guys hope everybody's doing good and again, I really appreciate everything you guys do for me all the help, um, support, the comments, uh, it it's, it's, uh, means a lot. So I appreciate it. Take care, guys. I'm going to get to work now.